Welcome to Texas Heart Institute educational programs on innovative technologies and techniques. I'm uh, Zwanemir Krajer. I'm an international cardiologist at Texas Heart Institute and uh, Baylor CHI Medical Center. The topic of today's presentation is the update on TAVR versus SAVR. TAVR is maturing 18-year-old technology. The first in man TAVR procedure was performed by Alain Cribier with Cribier Edwards Valve in Juan, France in 2002. This procedure was done by a transeptal antegrade uh, approach and published uh, in circulation. Now, what progress has been made for patients undergoing TAVR in the last 18 years? Currently, in the United States, we have uh, three TAVR systems uh, available for clinical use. Edward Sapien, original valve was Sapien, followed by Sapien XT, and the latest generation is Sapien 3. Medtronic uh, also had uh, several progress is made as far as uh, design is concerned. The first one was Core Valve, followed by the Evolute R, and the uh, last one was Evolute Pro Valve. Boston Scientific Valve uh, was just approved uh, this year for clinical use, and the name of their valve is Lotus. As far as the evolution of TAVR is concerned, at the beginning, only the patients with prohibitive surgical risk were including in a trial that was so-called partner trial. Of course, the end point at that point of time was mortality, and comparison was between uh, endovascular treatment with TAVR versus medical treatment for patients with prohibitive surgical risk. This was later followed by high surgical risk patients. And again, we looked at the mortality as end point. Following this, uh, we analyzed uh, the group of patients that were at intermediate surgical risk. And again, we looked at mortality and also stroke. More recently, low surgical risk patients were included in uh, the trials. And we looked at mortality, stroke, and uh, CV hospitalizations post-procedure. So what are the future trials that might be considered as far as TAVR is concerned? It's probably going to be asymptomatic patients with severe aortic stenosis. And uh, the endpoint of this particular evaluation is still not clearly known. Now, what have we seen over the last 18 years as far as uh, morbidity is concerned post TAVR? If we look at all cause mortality at 30 days from partner one and partner two trial, we can see that uh, incidence with a variety of valves, and particularly when we look at the newer generation of valve, has decreased tremendously from 6.3 at the beginning to 1.1 uh, in one of the latest clinical trials. When we look at all strokes at 30 days, in comparison with the earlier trials to the latest trials, we can see that the number of strokes has decreased dramatically. And currently, at the present time, we can see the disabling stroke is occurring in somewhere between 1 to 0.8%, while at the beginning, it was 7.3%. So obviously, the technology is improving and our techniques are improving, and our skill and uh, patient uh, uh, inclusion in those trials is also playing a significant role in reduction of those uh, morbidities and mortalities as well. One of the concerning factors as far as uh, TAVR is concerned, particularly in comparison with SAVR, is the incidence of uh, perivalvular leak. And here we can see when we look at partner one trial and partner two trial, and then uh, the latest information with Sapien 3 valve, we can see that the incidence of moderate uh, to severe perivalvular leak has decreased tremendously from uh, in the range of 24% to 
to 2.5% at the present time. There is no doubt, as I mentioned previously, that expertise, learning curve, plays a significant role in the outcomes and decrease in mortality and morbidity after TAVR. And here we can see that the incidence of a major vascular complication was above 15% in the earlier clinical trials, and at the present time, it's in the range of 1%. So obviously, this has to do not only with experience, but also with the profile of the devices that are decreasing significantly for the last several years. Let's look at the TAVR versus SARVR for intermediate risk patients, which is a relatively recent trial. And uh, if we look at the so-called SIR-TAVI trial that includes intermediate risk patients with evolute valves, uh, we can uh, see as far as 30 days safety and procedural related complications are concerned that uh, there is no uh, significant difference between all cause mortality uh, or even disabling stroke between uh, TAVR versus uh, SAVR. And that is also true uh, for major bleeding, as we can see. And, uh, uh, but we can see that surgical patients uh, had a higher need for blood transfusion than uh, TAVR patients and uh, also higher incidence of uh, acute renal uh, injury. However, the vascular complications were higher for TAVR patients than for surgical uh, patients. Um, the other param parameters were not significantly different other than uh, the need for a permanent pacemaker that was significantly tire, uh, higher for TAVR patients than for SAVR patients. However, the incidence of post-procedural uh, atrial fibrillation was significantly higher for SAVR patients than TAVR patients. When we look at uh, this particular study, as far as clinical outcomes are concerned, at 12 months and 24 months, we can see that uh, TAVR is a durable procedure and there were no uh, dramatic uh, differences as far as uh, all-cause mortality is concerned, uh, incidence of stroke is concerned, or disabling stroke, or TIA, uh, or myocardial infarction, or a need for re-intervention. Uh, or need for rehospitalization uh, between two uh, groups of patients. Another important factor is look at the hemodynamics. And we see here very interesting uh, information that SAVR patients uh, with evolute valves had a, a higher aortic valve area and lower gradients than surgically placed uh, valves not only immediately at discharge, but also at six months, at one year, and also at two years. What about aortic regurgitation after a TAVR is concerned in comparison with SAVR? Well, aortic regurgitation always has been an Achilles heel of a TAVR in comparison with surgical procedure is concerned. But what we can see is that even though the incidence of mild uh, or trivial aortic regurgitation is higher after uh, a TAVR, we can see that uh, as far as severe aortic, re aortic regurgitation is concerned or perivalvular leak is concerned, it's not dramatically different. And therefore, I think that the newer generation valves offer significant benefits in comparison with the previous generation valves and are slowly approaching the outcomes uh, as far as this particular parameter is concerned to a surgical valve replacement. Let's look at the latest data related to the low-risk TAVR trials with both balloon expandable and self-expanding of a valve. Those two uh, Manuscripts were simultaneously published in New England Journal of Medicine, and we can see 
as far as um, sapient tree trial with balloon expandable valve is concerned, the number of patients were a little bit smaller, 950 were included. The, there was no significant difference in age between two trials and um, STS score was similar between two trials. Um, and there was no difference as far as uh, comorbid factors are concerned. So if we look at the Evolute low risk trial, results and outcomes are concerned at 30 days, uh, comparing TAVR to SAVR, we can see that all cause mortality after TAVR was the lowest ever, 0.5%, and it was 1.3% after uh, TAVR. Uh, disabling uh, stroke was uh, also lower after TAVR than after SAVR, as we can see here, as well as life-threatening or disabling bleeding, uh, which was uh, very interesting here. Uh, this is uh, totally new as far as uh, incidence of uh, uh, bleeding is concerned, particularly related to vascular access complications. Also, the kidney injury was slightly lower after TAVR than SAVR. And uh, we can see low incidence of vascular complications that were not significantly different between two uh, groups. Again, uh, as previously shown, the incidence of atrial fibrillation after TAVR is dramatically lower than after SAVR. Uh, however, permanent pacemaker implantation was significantly higher after TAVR, occurring in 17.4% of cases versus 6.1% after uh, SAVR. The all uh, cause mortality and disabling stroke was not significantly different at long term and intermediate term of follow up. And uh, aortic valve reintervention was uh, equal between two groups. Uh, further data as far as uh, uh, Evolute R is uh, concerned uh, in comparison with uh, SAVR, uh, we can see that uh, as we mentioned with the previous uh, study, the gradients are uh, lower after um, uh, TAVR than SAVR. And uh, we can see that the valve area is uh, larger after TAVR versus SAVR. Also, uh, improvement of New York Heart uh, classification is similar between two groups as far as patients' uh, quality of life assessment as well is concerned. What about SAPIEN-3 low-risk trial? Well, we can see one interesting parameter that was not available in uh, the Evolute trial, that conscious sedation in SAPIEN-3 low-risk trial was uh, used in 65% of patients, which is very high, and this is a new trend as far as TAVR is concerned. Procedure time was dramatically shorter after TAVR in comparison with SAVR. Uh, there was no different length of stay in ICU, but there was a shorter length of stay in the hospital for TAVR patients in comparison with SAVR. And what was also very interesting that 96% uh, of patients after TAVR were discharged home to self-care uh, versus 73% of patients that had a surgical repair, which is statistically significant. Also, as far as concomitant procedures are concerned, they were less common after TAVR than after surgery. As far as uh, in-hospital mortality is concerned, it was lower after TAVR, which is the first time reported significant difference in this type of subset and population of patients. Also, as far as uh, bleeding, major bleeding is concerned, it was lower after TAVR. The vascular complications were low after TAVR 2.3 and 1.5 after surgery. Uh, the new uh, need for pacemaker was 6.5% uh, uh, versus 4% uh, after SAVR. And the new left bundle branch block was higher after TAVR in comparison with SAVR. Uh, as far as reintervention is concerned, it was zero for both subgroups. Uh, and as far as asymptomatic valve thrombosis is concerned, it was occurring in 0.3% of patients after TAVR versus zero after SAVR, indicating that this is a, 
uh, issue of uh, low importance at the present time and short-term follow-up uh, in this subset of patients. Additional information from this trial, new onset atrial fibrillation at 30 days was dramatically lower after TAVR, again confirming the information also from a low-risk uh, uh, Evolute trial. The length of hospital stay was also significantly shorter after TAVR, uh, as well as all cause of death, stroke, and re-hospitalization at one year, again shorter after TAVR and quality of life uh, was better in this particular study after TAVR. Uh, death uh, of all stroke at 30 days was again lower after TAVR, and all stroke at 30 days again lower after TAVR. So uh, when we look at the primary endpoints in um, uh, this particular study with uh, Sapien 3 valve, we can see that there is a statistically significant difference and trend for most of the studied parameters favoring Traver, uh, TAVR in comparison with SAVR patients in this particular study. What about the perivalvular regurgitation in this particular study? We can see that uh, no uh, uh, perivalvular leak was uh, higher at 30 days post uh, saver than post taver uh, but uh, at uh, one year follow-up we can see that a very small number of patients in a uh, sapien uh, group had a mild endoleak and uh, very few had a moderate uh, endoleak of course the numbers were in favor of surgical uh, population of patients as far as no endoleak or mild endoleak is concerned. One of the things that is of importance is to know when we look at uh, uh, multi-center studies and uh, meta-analysis of all the clinical trials that have been carried on as far as randomized clinical trials are concerned to look at the uh, risks and benefits of TAVR versus SAVR. We can see one of the publications uh, that uh, included a large number of patients and they looked at all the parameters of importance. And here we can see in the top panel, in hospital or 30 day mortality, we can see that it's slightly favoring uh, TAVR in comparison with SAVR. In hospital or 30 day stroke and or TIA, again, it was slightly in favor of TAVR versus SAVR is concerned. When we look at uh, long-term outcomes uh, in this meta-analysis uh, on a three-year mortality, again, it was slightly in several studies in favor of TAVR versus SAVR, and we look at uh, one to three year stroke and or TIA, it was equivalent between TAVR and SAVR for most of the study parameters. When we look at the need for a pacemaker implantation of, uh, or ICD placement, again, there was a, a favoring um, a SAVR rather than TAVR, and that has been shown in several more recent randomized trial. When we also look at uh, more than moderate aortic regurgitation is concerned, it favors a SAVR uh, for most of the studies that were analyzed. When we look at the cost of uh, hospitalization and uh, additional expenses uh, needed as far as re-interventions are concerned, uh, comparison of uh, TAVR and SAVR is shown here in this particular publication from uh, PARTNER, a uh, trial. We can see that there is no uh, statistically significant difference as far as costs are concerned at 12 months of follow-up uh, comparing uh, transfemoral TAVR versus uh, uh, surgical aortic valve replacement. 
So what is happening at the present time in comparison with the early beginning of uh, Tavar is concerned, uh, we can see that um, as far as uh, Tavar is concerned, it is on a very rapid rise. Basically, for almost all patients or all subgroups, as far as patients younger than 74, uh, patients older than 74, patients uh, with uh, low severity, and also patients with high severity as far as risk of surgery is concerned. So obviously, uh, TAVR is here to stay and is showing very promising results. I would like to share with you just briefly the information from uh, the uh, fast track protocol or the least invasive TAVR is concerned and how this is impacting uh, the outcomes of uh, TAVR on uh, our patients. Of course, the most important thing is pre-procedural information and screening of patients to make sure that they are candidates for this particular approach. Uh, during the procedure, we should minimize uh, complications and uh, do the procedures that are the least uh, invasive, which includes uh, uh, local anesthesia, conscious sedation, percutaneous approach, uh, transthoracic echo rather than transesophageal echo is concerned. In post-procedure, the patients are admitted to a regular floor, obviously on telemetry. They uh, receive dual antiplatelet therapy until um, a different modality of treatment is necessary. No ICU stay is uh, necessary and the next day discharge. I would like to share with you some of our information that we gathered recently and uh, we compared our personal experiences with Fast Track Tavr with uh, a recently published uh, 3M uh, trial that included uh, 14 centers uh, in North America using so-called least invasive or fast track protocol. As we can see in our population of patients, uh, the patients were slightly sicker and STS score was higher. Uh, they were a little bit younger than in a 3M study. Conscious sedation in our patients were used in 100% of patients versus 98.3 in a 3M study. Conversion to general anesthesia in our population of patients was 1.3 versus 1.5% in 3M study. Median length of stay in our study was 1.3 versus 1 in 3M. Next day discharge uh, in our population was achieved in 67% of patients versus 80 in 3M. Discharge within 48 hours was achieved in our population of patients in 84% of patients. Major vascular complications were not significantly different between two uh, trials um, and the hospital mortality was zero in our population of patients versus 1.5 uh, in 3M uh, trials and 30-day mortality was 0.8% in our institution versus 1.5 in 3M uh, study and 30-day th stroke was 0.8% in our population versus 1.5 in 3M study and 30-day readmission rate was 8.6% in our study versus 9.2 in 3M, which is not statistically significant. And the discharge to self-care at home was achieved in 97% of our patients. And 30-day need for a new uh, pacemaker occurred in 7.5% of patients in our study versus 5.7% of patients in 3M study. So comparison of two studies uh, showed very similar results as far as outcomes are concerned with evidence of some minor improvement in certain parameters as far as our uh, patient population and outcomes are concerned. When we compare this with the other studies that have been published from a partner tree trial, low-risk patients, uh, evolute uh, low-risk patients, and partner 2A trial, we can see that uh, our results show very 
satisfactory results with evidence of uh, better outcomes, I believe, on the basis of uh, the use of almost exclusively conscious sedation, percutaneous approach, and uh, uh, discharge within uh, 24 to maximum 48 hours after procedure. So, where do we stand as far as TAVR 2020 is concerned? We can say that SAVR has been the standard of care with proven safety and durability for most patients. Of course, younger patients uh, that do not have a contraindication to the use of anticoagulants are still uh, recommended to undergo uh, uh, surgical repair with uh, uh, mechanical aortic valves, and that's on the basis of durability of those type of valves are concerned. However, TAVR has been truly transformative and is now preferred approach for patients with prohibitive and high risk surgical risk. This has been clearly shown in previous randomized clinical trials. TAVR is now also an alternative to SAVR for patients at an intermediate and low risk surgical risk patient, which has been clearly shown in recently published and carried on clinical trials. The incidence of all complications, mortality and morbidity is concerned, is rapidly declining with TAVR with the implementation of newer technologies and techniques. The threshold for TAVR is declining in clinical trials, in registries, and also in clinical practice. However, multidisciplinary team is essential for good outcomes. Thank you very much for your attention.